There are many types of paintings. There are sad ones. There are happy ones. And then there are paintings that really make you think, what is even going on here? And if you're like me, you generally have a hard time understanding what ideas or emotions of paintings trying to convey, unless the idea is right in your face. Now, the question that tends to pop in my head generally is, what makes a painting so popular and worth thousands of dollars? But to draw any possible conclusions, I would first have to answer the question that stumps me the most. How does one understand paintings? Now, let me say that with every great journey, there is a beginning. So let me start with that and also give myself the opportunity to state that I have zero formal and informal education in art. This is from the perspective of an outsider looking in and then just trying to make sense of things and then giving voice to my finding. This is more of a discussion video and if you're like me, you generally have random questions in your head and you want answers to them but you don't really want to dive too deep into certain topics. So with this disclaimer said, let's go ahead with the video. Now, throughout my life, I've always heard people discuss paintings but not in the way I assume one would converse about books, shows, or movies. Like, for example, I really like the anime Naruto, because one of my favorite characters, really hot take here, Sakura, despite being poorly written, shows one of the most realistic character growths throughout the series, and in my opinion shows a better take on the whole underdog character archetype when compared to the main character Naruto, because she was never really destined for greatness like Naruto was. But that's not what I hear when paintings are involved. At least in the discussions I've been a part of or heard, I've always heard people bring up certain paintings like, for example, Vincent van Gogh's Starry Night, and state something like, I really love this painting, and then followed up with a random fact of Van Gogh like, did you know he cut off his own ear? This does make me wonder if some paintings' meanings are judged solely based on what the artist is going through or their state of mind. So in my journey of enlightenment, I wanted to better understand how some people go about judging painting. So to aid me in my journey, a couple friends of mine and myself decided to go to the San Francisco Modern Art Museum. Now over there, I did ask a couple people how they judge paintings and how they go about trying to understand their meaning. And by a couple, I mean only two random strangers over there with the addition of asking my coworkers and my friends what their thoughts and opinions were. To my surprise, a lot of them were on the same same boat. We really don't know why certain paintings are popular or are considered good, but when it came down to how they go about trying to understand the meaning behind a painting, most did fall under two categories, with the first being understanding by the painter's technique. This includes how thick or slim the strokes are, the usage of colors to invoke dark or bright themes, even how many layers of paint on a painting, and etc. The other category is using in Intuition? This is more with judging the themes of a painting by how it makes the individual looking at the painting feel. So to simplify the two categories, one of the categories focuses on trying to understand what the theme or feeling the painter is trying to convey, and the other focuses on what feelings an individual might have when they look at a painting. So starting with the first category technique, we have Lynn Robinson from Libre Text Humanities writing about famous painting Huernica by Spanish artist Pablo Picasso. Robinson in her article Pablo Picasso Huernica writes, In 1937, Pablo Picasso expressed his outrage against war with Huernica, his enormous moral-sized painting displayed to millions of visitors at the Paris World's Fair. Much of the painting's emotional power comes from its overwhelming size, approximately 11 feet tall and 25 feet wide. Now, one could say that part of Picasso's technique to show how much of a big deal the war with Huernica was, was by literally making a huge painting about it. Another technique being used in this painting is distortion. Notice how some of the painting you can barely recognize that there are people and animals. There's a person on the floor with a knife and another person in the right just suffering. This use of distortion in this painting was probably to show how people were seeing the war and everything was happening so quickly to them that they barely had time to make sense of what was even going on. Another good example of technique is from a famous painting called A Sunday a la Grande Chatte by French painter Georges Seurat. Seurat used this technique called pointillism, which is the technique of painting with small dots to give the illusion of a painting from a far distance. Now, pointillism is very impressive, but it's beyond the scope of this video. 
So dialing it back, in Surah's painting, he wanted to convey a sort of timelessness feel. The Art of Institute Chicago states in a brief summary of a Sunday Allegran shot, Surah wanted to invoke the sense of timelessness associated with ancient art, especially Egyptian and Greek sculpture. He once wrote, I want to make modern people in their essential traits move about as they do on those friezes and place them on canvases organized by harmonies of color. Essentially, he wanted to capture the everyday person in all their beauty, which he does in a simple way of just creating dots by making a painting to reflect a relaxing Sunday afternoon. But now coming to the intuition category, or we could call it the subjective category, I will say that this was the hardest thing for me to understand, which is letting a painting try to invoke certain feelings in me. So for example, we'll be looking at a famous painting called The Persistence of Memory by Spanish painter Salvador Dali. Now I tried to look around for possible meanings for this painting, and some were saying that it shows a mockery of timekeeping, while others were just more impressed by the use of surrealism. So in a way, people just enjoyed seeing everyday objects look kind of funny, being used weirdly, and looking kind Kind of dreamlike. It might be an oversimplification, but the point is when it comes to trying to understand what the themes are from this painting, it's kind of up in the air. And maybe Diali did have some sort of meaning he wanted to convey. Maybe he wanted to convey how time shouldn't get in the way of enjoying life's many pleasures. But that's me missing the point of the intuition part. As one of my coworkers stated, some paintings, you're supposed to look at them and let them invoke certain feelings or themes. So with that in mind, looking at the persistence of memory, it does give me a whole different perspective, where I think it's a mockery of timekeeping. I uh, see a pleasant beach, and it sort of gives me a summer feel, and with the clocks melting, to me it implies that it is an endless summer. Though, if I were to try to understand this, Judging by the title, I would say that this is a representation of when we're in certain areas. We might randomly remember a time when we were there before, and the melting of time could mean that the memory we have is timeless. Now, putting all these ideas together, can we come up with a conclusion as to why certain paintings become popular and worth thousands of dollars? The answer to that is not really. There are a few areas that I see that I didn't cover that are probably factors, such as the painting's relevancy to the time period, how well the painting did summarizing the time period, or even a painter's state of mind. Were they crazy? Were they depressed? How well did they show their emotions through their painting? And also, if the painting's the last of its kind to use a certain technique that can't be mastered by anyone else, or even a certain material that isn't being used anymore. So with all that being said, what are your thoughts? What are your corrections? Did I misunderstand something? Or did I misunderstand everything? Let me know in the comments below. With that being said, I bid you all adieu.